Welcome to our AFX tire review, boys. This time it's the Moto Slayer. Let's get started. Yeah, 30 by nine and a half on a 14 inch wheel. So EFX Moto Slayers, we've gotten a couple rides on them now so I can give a, uh, I guess, well, I can give some feedback, really. I get it. All right, let's go try out these EFX Moto Slayers. Um, we should rank them basically on a scale of one to 10 in a couple different categories, performance. <laughs> Coming in at 43 pounds. We know the wheels weigh 23 pounds, so let's zero this bad boy out. We are looking at, let's get you up right on there. 65 pounds, so minus the uh, 23, we'd be looking at approximately uh, 43 pounds. Actually, so that's not as heavy as they feel. For a 30 inch tire with a two inch lug on the outer and I think it was one and a half to one and three quarters in the center um, that's a fairly decent weight that's actually lighter than the stock ITP cryptids that they put on these machines which truly only measure 28 inches and that's another thing we should talk about is these do measure true at a 30 inch tall tire okay you gotta put a lot of air in these babies when I measured them with no air in them they were 29 but they are soft rubber so they stretch they're stretched out right now at about a touch over 30. It's hard to get the right angle though. With 10 pounds of air in them, right? So when they're advertised as a 30 inch tire and they measure 30, that's nice to see. Like I just said, the ITP cryptids that come stock on these machines out of the grate only actually measure truth 28 inches. And I think they weigh about 46 pounds if I recall correctly. So that being said, um, I compared these basically um, against my XM310s because they're quite similar in design, being there's a channel that runs down the center of the tire. However, there are a couple differences between this tire and the XM310, one being that the lugs are staggered back and forth and the 310s are directly across from each other. So that gives uh, these two tires completely different characteristics that actually set them quite a bit apart. What I learned from these tires, because um, they actually trailed really good. Probably, let's face it, they're still mud tires. So let's let's rate them at about seven. I'm gonna say, um, which is really high on a trailing characteristic. And that being said, 
um, they actually turned quite well versus the XM310 because of the staggered uh, design, right? So always when you're sliding to the side, giving you a straight edge running down the center of the tire that can be hooked up and contacted with will stop the machine from kicking out straight, right? So with the 310, you've got paddles on both sides directly across from each other. There's really no, when you start sliding to the side, um, no straight edge to catch, right? No forward edge or very little of that just on the inside of the lugs. Um, but being directly across from each other, they don't really get contact. It slides straight across. You guys know what I'm saying, I'm sure. So these turned and handled actually really, really well. They hooked up really, really well in all the hard pack situations, grass and all that stuff. <laughs> momentum again these were a better forward moving tires trailing and basically a 7 out of 10 which I think is pretty high for a mud tire extremely high actually um, like a Moto Havoc I probably would give them a 6 um, an Assassinator I'm probably going to rank that at somewhere like a 2 or 3 um, not that you can't ride them fast because they are a smooth riding tire for what they are especially with 3 inch lugs uh, but they are sketchy at times because there's very little contact patch right so Assassinator would come in like a 3 score in the handling uh, for trail characteristics, I think I would give it a Havoc somewhere around a 5 or a 6. And like I said, I think I would rank this at a solid 7 because these handle actually quite good. They hook up very well in the corners. Well enough that I think you could easily put the bike on two wheels. Yeah, it definitely handled well. <laughs> Measured true, weighed uh, reasonably, uh, good sized lug, great forward momentum um, with the, the, the proven sort of check mark design like the Havoc. They used a very similar tread design. Um, but the more curvature obviously that you get forward, and I mean you'll see this with the Naders, they go all the way into the center of the tire on quite a decent hook. Um, the more forward curvature obviously, the better forward momentum cutting through the mud, right? <laughs> whereas the 310 again is quite a bit less I'd say you know you might have a little bit of a curve to it I don't have my 310s but I'll throw a picture up right here on the screen and you guys can sort of see what I mean but uh, less curvature to the lug and that's going to give you well it's going to dig more right you're going to go down faster than you move forward or depending vice versa on the on the angle of the curve and how drastic it is right so yeah so the 310s I found uh, and they move forward well they propel you well forward faster than they go down they do definitely dig faster than these tires whereas I found these tires gave you a really good forward momentum much like the Moto Havoc <laughs> um, and again I uh, attribute that to your you're a bit more of a curve here right so you're cutting forward better um, 
less resistance moving forward so for mud if we had to rank them in mud well i have some skag footage for you guys now right and a little bit of thick stuff a little bottomless stuff so we'll interject some of that here <laughs> have to rank these at a solid eight for skag and mud um they worked really good because of their forward momentum i actually didn't have uh much problem getting through the worst of it Actually, I thought they worked great so I would probably rank them when it came to skag and mud riding like uh, soft soft uh, material I'd say they were a solid eight uh, on that scale I'm gonna give a uh, havoc probably nine and I'm gonna give XM 310 um, kind of moves down a little further than a, like like I said it slows you up I think it's a great working tire and i'm probably going to put it pretty much on the same scale as far as soft stuff because i think they're a great working tire and they do actually outperform when it comes to a stuck scenario and pawing out up and out of a scenario where the bike is already stuck or being winched forward and how much uh assistance that those tr the the logs and the tires give you right so
So, so yeah, I ranked them about the same, and I think uh, these guys went in the forward momentum to offset that, right? So. I'm thinking the XM310 would fall on an 8 in the mud category. A Nader obviously is going to get the 10. He's going to get the full 10 because the 3 inch paddle and the smooth ride and its ability to move forward fast through through mired situations with lots of material and sometimes even bottomless. They can, they can propel forward fast enough that you can skim and skip across stuff that you really probably could never, you know, imagine that you, you definitely couldn't crawl through, right? So... Nader gets a 10 in that scale. Solid 8. Solid 8 for the Havoc. Or, sorry. I'm going to say a 9 for the Havoc. The Havoc actually does really, really well um, when it comes to uh, soft material and deep material. Uh, working them away through the water, through the skag, through the clay. I thought they were a great tire. So durability. Another category I think we should add there. And the durability on these, they're much like the Havoc, so they're a very soft compound. They're probably going to wear pretty quick. I've only put two rides on these. The front look immaculate, but if we look at the back already, I mean, these aren't deep scythes. They're really, really, really actually shallow. But if you look really close, the little tiny edge that they have on them is already getting a little bit chewed up. And I had very little road wear on these. Um, but some hard pack. Right, uh, gravel, dirt road scenarios, and a little bit of asphalt. But yeah, I see that they're a very soft compound, much like, much like the Moto Havoc. As you can see, look at that. I can torque on these just like nothing. So they're a soft, soft tire, um, which allows them to grip really well. They're a great gripping tire, I found. sufficient all the way around but i think what what really makes these tires a great tire is their trailing characteristics are are actually amazing they're quite good um and then their ability to deal with pretty much anything that's going to come or step in your way rather mud Slayed it. deep holes you know They worked well with water. For <laughs> skimming, there was another category right there. Now, they would have scored probably the best score. I would have given them a perfect 10 in the skimming department, other than the fact that. That was whacked. It threw shit straight ahead, couldn't see nothing. And the 310s didn't do this because they had a sort of staggered design. Yes, they're, they're not staggered in the sense of forward you know offset lugs but they were staggered in the sense of they did not run the channel perfectly down the center of the tire it kind of went in and out because it went small lug big lug vice versa back and forth right it goes like this not perfectly straight down like this so what that did was it actually causes the xm310 while skipping water to disperse further out however they rode on top and they were a little more sketchy than these tires. These tires actually skim straighter than any tire I've ever run because of the center channel. Wow. 
the only downfall of that was it kicked the water straight up and out and into the rider's face. So visibility wasn't quite as good, I'd say, as the XM310. However, that being said, stability was the best I've ever seen. They, they railed straight through water um, with unbelievable precision and handling. So visibility, comfort, like, like feeling uh, confident that you're not going to go over the bars, they're not gonna yank or go out of control. Actually, I never, they just beeline straight. As long as you wanted to hold it, you were going straight. So you just couldn't see very well, that's all. So I would give them probably at least another, I'd solid eight or nine, maybe a nine. Um, now nah, eight, because if you can't see, it's kind of tough, but by God, they skin straight. It was awesome. So yeah, that's a couple things, right? We talked about their height. We talked about their weight. We talked about lug depth, um, handling characteristic, mud characteristics uh compound durability what else i think that basically covers it so that is my opinion on the, the uh efx motor slayer 30 by nine and a half by 14. so all around score i would have to give you know if wrapped in one for an all-round tire they're going to be a solid 8 out of 10 which is a good high score i believe so we're going to get her loaded up into the trailer and uh, put away for the night We'll get back out on the trail and we'll give them some more uh more whoopings we'll get we'll get into using them for for just about everything you can right and uh we'll give you guys more feedback as we go but uh in the meantime enjoy the footage cheers